active portfolio management really work right probably uh, the intention to this particular session is will the active portfolio management really work or how do i really uh, look at the active portfolio management part so from that standpoint what we are looking at is how do i really assess what should be an optimal level of additional risk that i should take and how much of additional return that i can expect right that is why we call it as residual risk and residual return what is that additional risk i can take where i can get compensated with that additional return and we also talk about in terms of uh, the computation of information ratio which is uh, one of the important uh, tools as a part of active portfolio management so if i change my combination in certain way is that going to result in the additional return for me or is it be is it going to be more futile because whenever we talk about the active portfolio management whenever we talk about the active portfolio management our intention is always generate a portfolio return which will be greater than your benchmark return which will exceed the benchmark so if i say nifty is my benchmark or sensex is my benchmark so any some any particular index is the benchmark all i want to know is if i am generating my own portfolio if i am generating my own portfolio obviously i am taking some additional risk so can this additional risk result in some additional return that is what we are trying to look at and uh, uh, that is what we are trying to go ahead with respect to the assessment of residual risk and return and then get into the computation of the information ratio and use that information to identify what is the optimal level of risk and optimal level of return and things like that now in this process the first thing that we need to understand is the concept of alpha which is otherwise called as a residual return then we will also look at the concept of residual risk so what is the excess return over the benchmark return so if i say nifty is my benchmark or some index is my benchmark what is the excess return which my security has generated let's say i have uh, calling infosys as the security which i am uh, looking at so i will look at by what extent infosys returns have uh, exceeded the nifty returns uh, or if i am looking at an adjusted benchmark means if i am taking nifty as a benchmark but this nifty's return i will adjust it based on the risk and return of infosys because uh, infosys risk could be completely different from the nifty's uh, risk so what i typically do is if at all nifty is having a similar risk as that of infosys if at all the benchmark has a similar risk of uh, infosys what should be the return that it will be generating so i am taking the expected benchmark return and adjusting it for the risk and return for the security so probably if i say capm return is more like that because in capm we were uh, computing we were uh, computing uh, the return the expected return on the security as the risk free rate of return plus whatever was the uh, additional return with the market was able to generate multiplied by the risk uh, associated with that security with respect to the benchmark which is the market so that kind of a return if i am taking that is what i call as a benchmark return 
now in actual what is the exact return which the security has generated over the benchmark return that is what i typically call as the alpha of the security so the actual return above the expected return and the expected return is coming based on comparison to a benchmark and adjusting that benchmark return with the risk associated with the object which i am more or less uh, monitoring the most common form of benchmark return we can take it as a capm based uh, return which comes out as an expected return so in all the actual return above the ex uh, expected return is what i am calling as the alpha and we can very well uh, look at computing the alpha even through the regression relationship the regression relationship uh, whatever uh, i can look at is okay what is the excess excess of the portfolio return over the risk free rate of return so here i am not taking any benchmark directly okay if in last 5 uh, years right so probably uh, let me take one uh, numerical for you now let's look at uh, a small numerical i have considered a security uh, a which is of interest to us and over the past 10 years let's say this particular security has generated return something like this when the risk free rate of return in the country was something like this so and similarly the benchmark which i am uh, looking at for this let's say it has generated some such kind of returns so how do i find out the alpha i mean in one year probably uh, the actual return minus the benchmark return may be zero so if at all i want to find out the alpha in this case all we are saying is take whatever is your securities return over the risk free rate of return over the last few periods so this is the excess of your risk free rate of uh, of your uh, securities return over the risk free rate of return similarly benchmark return over the risk free rate of return benchmark return over the risk free rate of return so these are the numbers now now this rp is nothing but your securities returns over the risk free rate of return secure it could be security or it could be your portfolio your portfolio's return above the risk free rate of return for that particular period over the last few period so in this case let's say i have taken a 10 year period the risk free rate of return sorry the return of your portfolio above the risk free rate of return similarly when i look at rb whatever is the benchmark portfolio it could be nifty as simple again above the risk free rate of return so i have those two kind of numbers and if i perform a regression taking this as the dependent variable and this as the independent variable so i will take the slope right the same regression uh, equation i can uh, find out uh, the slope as well as the y intercept so based on the slope as well as the y intercept so the slope i will take it as these are my y's when these are my x's let me just see what has happened here r b sorry this is r b minus r f right so these are the numbers so when i am computing the slope which will give me the beta the known y's and the known x's 
so i know the beta in this security is around 0.54 and uh, the intercept of this regression equation is what will give me my alpha right this is the way we can derive the alpha for this particular security using the data from the historical period so the alpha is coming out to plus 1.71 which is telling me that my security is generating a positive alpha this security is generating a slightly higher level of uh, return that is what uh, we are calling as the alpha for this security so the alpha for this security came out to 1.71 positive means it is generating more than the benchmark returns negative means it is generating lesser than the benchmark return so the alpha that is decided through this model we call it as x post alpha post is always with respect to the past whereas whenever we talk about ante we are talking about the future which is the forecasted kind of alpha so first i will get my alphas based on the historical data and uh, those are the alphas right now i would start forward in terms of forming my portfolio so 1.71 is the alpha in this case similarly we can work out uh, for the various other securities and uh, in it uh, in turn come out with the various alphas for each of those securities and whenever we are uh, talking of portfolio alpha if i have individual alphas for individual securities the weighted alpha of each of those individual securities is what is giving me my portfolio alpha right so alpha is nothing but excess return over the expected return and the expected return is determined based on a benchmark portfolio getting adjusted for the risk levels on the same lines as the security of my interest so that is how the alpha is getting derived for this particular security now once i know the alpha which is my annualized residual return i can also find out the change the change in the returns using the the the, the fluctuation and the standard deviation of the fluctuations is what if i am taking let's say the standard deviation of this that is what is called as residual risk so the standard deviation of this if i am uh, taking which is what will lead me to a residual risk which is 3.31 so that is what we call as the residual risk and the residual return the ratio of those two is what we can consider as the information ratio and how do i get that information ratio from the same analysis whatever we have done right uh, okay how do i get the information ratio for this the other way to arrive at the information ratio is compute the t statistic for this i can get the t value here let me get the t statistic because this is a regression uh, relationship between the two you can find out uh, the t value corresponding to this which will go as 